Welcome to the stage, the man of the hour, Mr. Tom Stage! stood up or something. <laughs> but, you know, it's fucking, can't get everything you ask for now, huh? <laughs> fucking had a little announcement before. Hey, you guys want to stand up? And you guys pretty much went, fuck you, Tom. <laughs> when you come out here, <laughs> we'll clap real fucking loud, but <laughs> I'm a little tired. <laughs> I'm a little tired. This ain't fucking church. <laughs> so very excited, very, very excited to be here taping my second DVD in, uh, in a little place called Sulphurt that no one's ever heard about. <laughs> Rocking. A lot of a lot of comedians, you know, they're they're like, hey, welcome, fuck, good to be here in Washington D.C., <laughs> fucking New York. I'm like, all right, Salford. <laughs> fucking people at home are gonna go, where the fuck Salford? <laughs> it's just outside Manchester, but they don't like to be included. <laughs> they don't like to be included. They get real fucking angry at that shit. They're like. Woo, Sulphur. Well, fuck, and we're gonna put you on the map tonight. And uh, it's, fun. it's so, so great to just be here. Uh, I'm, I'm, staying, uh, I'm staying at the lovely uh, Sulphur Travel Lodge. It's about 0.03 miles away. Uh, fucking, uh, you know, I've, I've stayed at many travel lodges, but that one fucking rocks. <laughs> because uh, they had it refurbished. <laughs> and um, a, lot of, a lot of people go, Tom, Tom, why you stay at a travel lodge, Tom? And I'll tell you why, because I'm not rich and famous enough to be a pussy grabber. <laughs> okay? Maybe one day, when I'm a pussy grabber, I'll be able to stay at a better place. <laughs> And, fuck, and that's what I'm shooting for in my life. You know, just to be so rich that I can walk up to strangers and just grab them by the pussy. You know? it's, uh, it's just something. Fuck it. If that man didn't inspire me, <laughs> fucking gave me a goal to shoot for. Fucking, you too could be a pussy grabber, kids, if you. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, 
see. And, and it's funny, because men, men have to get rich and famous to be a pussy grabber. Uh, women don't have to be rich or famous to be a cock grabber. You just have to be drunk and horny in a fucking bar. Uh, I mean, fucking, that's how my wife met me. You know, I said, are you rich? And she, she just grabbed my cock and I said, are you fucking rich and famous? And she said, no, I'm drunk and horny. And I, I didn't say I was offended. I said, will you marry me? <laughs> And we've been together for 21 years and she's just been grabbing it randomly whenever she wants. It's just something beautiful. Sometimes the most evil things turn out to be something great. <laughs> so. So, Salford, fucking, I'm a, I, I love it. I'm traveling around. I've been, uh, this is what I do, man. This is, and, I, uh, and I'm loving being here. Fucking, uh, I, I don't normally hang around in the towns. You know, I normally just do the fucking gig and then get the fuck out. But I'm hanging out tomorrow. I'm hanging out in fucking Salford. Check this shit out. Uh, and I'm loving you. What's, you look to be about my age. How old are you? 65. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Some bitch over there. <laughs> He's 65. I saw him on the bus today. He got off for free. That's how I know how old this cunt is. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cock grabber over there. That's what you're looking at. She just fucking grabs cocks and starts talking for people. <laughs> so... <laughs> So what's your name of her? What's Steve, right on. Nice man. And how old are you, Stevie? 51. Fuck, I'm 46, Steve. <laughs> the fuck happened to you, Stevie? Look at you, 51. <laughs> Gotta eat your vegetables, Steve. That's all I know. Fucking mommy told me that shit. Eat your vegetables. You can't keep eating red meat like that. Fuck. <laughs> right on, Steve, man. Are you from here now, Steve? Are you from the big town of Salford? Yeah, you're not from Salford here? Where are you from, Steve? Preston, fucking another town that nobody's gonna know of. Just, just for all you people at home, it's a little shithole north of here. It's like, it's like, fuck, just up the, just up the road where dreams die. <laughs> Preston, Preston's a place where they go. I just want a cheap house and die. Welcome to your fucking three-bedroom semi-detached. It only cost you 45,000 pounds. <laughs> you can live here forever and work at Walmart. Now, right on, Steve. So you ain't from here. You're a traveler here, right, Steve? You fucking visiting just like I am, Steve. Right, and I, I checked out Salford, Steve. I, I was on, I fucking looked on uh, tr uh, TripAdvisor. Fucking, cause that's, uh, that's the world we live in now, Stevie. We live, people advising us on our trips, Steve. Can you believe that? <laughs> sure. Remember when trips used to be an adventure, huh? Fucking <laughs> didn't know what we were gonna do on a trip. <laughs> And now it's in, now it's like fucking, we gotta be fucking advised. That's fucked up shit, right, Steve? Now, I'm looking at some people in here. We got some young people, right? Uh, fucking, you look pretty young. How old are you? 30 fucking three. Fucking Jesus, I thought you were younger than that. You're looking okay. See, Steve, vegetables. <laughs> takes care of himself, Steve. <laughs> now, that's awesome, man. Fucking any 20-year-olds? You got any 20s? People that are 20-year-old? You're, you're, you're fucking, you're, you're, you're 20? Fuck off, you're 20. Shut the fuck up. Don't you fuck with me tonight. See. 20-year-olds, you're fucking, how old are you? What, who are you, man? Chris, how old are you, Chris? 
19, that's what I'm fucking talking about, Steve. Look at that shit. This kid don't know a world without TripAdvisor, Chris, huh? Fucking, you've never ventured out of this town without what the fuck is knowing what's going on out there, right? Chris, you don't leave, fucking me and Steve. Fucking, when we went on fucking holidays, right, Steve? We just show up in a fucking place and wing it, wouldn't we, Steve? We just show up, find the nearest fucking bar, then we'd be like, hey, I'll take a Jack Daniels and Coke and a pack of Marlboro Lights and... Is there anything to do in this shithole? <laughs> this shithole here? I've never been here. Is there anything to do here? Some old cunt with three teeth or... <laughs> the fuck, he'll go, fuck yeah, there's a whorehouse down the road. <laughs> you didn't wonder how many stars it had. <laughs> didn't wonder. <laughs> be a two-star whorehouse or a five-star whorehouse. I'm not leaving a review. <laughs> Say, you are a trip advisor. <laughs> you know, just fucking go, you just do it. Now you can fucking advise and taking the mystery out, right, Chris? Yeah, man, fucking like, like, you know, I checked it out. I checked it out for Salford. I checked out TripAdvisor for fucking sulfur. This is how big of a town this is. Do you know how many things there are to do in this shithole? 34. <laughs> you could live here your whole life and not do all of them. Fucking not do all 34 things to do in sulfur. Fucking, you know what? 26 of them are bars. <laughs> Fucking 26 of them will tell Not one whorehouse, though. <laughs> Fuck, because we all know where that one is. <laughs> Fucking 34, man. Crazy ass shit. Number one thing to do, believe it or not, is come here. Come here to the fucking Lowry. That's the number one thing to do. Had, had, had 2,000 reviews. Five star reviews and 37 fucking hated this fucking place. 37 people, and it's not even the place they hated. Fucking looked it up. Turns out Pixie Lot came here and tried to do a fucking, uh, did a thing called Breakfast at Tiffany's, and you guys all thought she sucked. Fucking, I don't even know who the fuck Pixie Lot is. But get the fuck out of musical theater. You're bringing this place down. <laughs> bringing this fucking Lowry's down thanks to Pixie, whoever the fuck you are. <laughs> number one thing to do is come here. Like, and you want to know number two? Look, look, look. If you got enough time. <laughs> if you don't spend too much time here, watching Pixie Lot trying to fucking sing or whatever the fuck she does. <laughs> Number two things to do, wild wing bird of prey fucking center. <laughs> That's number two thing to do. Number two things to do, Steve, have you done it? <laughs> fucking, maybe tomorrow we'll go and check it out. <laughs> Only got 37. 37 people reviewed it. Four people didn't like it. Four people didn't like it. They were fooled. They were fooled. They said there was 75 birds of prey there. When they got there, there was just a shitload of barn owls. <laughs> fucking God, fucking one of them killed their dog. <laughs> well, we warned you. <laughs> Oh, fucking, there's just so much to do here. And, uh, and if I don't have, if I, got, I don't know if I got enough uh, pills and face paint to, to finish this tour, but uh, maybe after I check out some bar now, <laughs> I might dead down to the working class, uh, working class movement library. <laughs> That's an actual thing to do here. 
It's not even a fucking museum. It's a working class movement. Fucking check out the, yeah, you can come on down to the, there's three books, they're all on fucking poor people and what we did. And we're gonna need that back because we can't afford any more of them. My question to you, Salford, is does this town ever sleep? <laughs> where, where do you find the time to even hold down a job when all that excitement's going on? Oh, I love it. I can love it here, man. I think it's... Uh, I think it's great. See, I, I'm also, I'm not from here either. And this is one of the funnest things for me to do, Steve. Uh, mm. Travel around, I don't know what, what the fuck do you do for a living, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Better get down to the working class movement library. Start, start working on your English there, Steve. <laughs> Got a job, Steve? <laughs> what do you do, Stevie? <laughs> you work where, Steve? Inland Revenue. <laughs> Look at all these tax dodging fucking assholes doing you. I can probably took away their houses, Steve. That's fabulous. That's excellent. How long you been? How long you been fucking robbing people? Twenty years. Twenty. Twenty years you've been making sure this country stays afloat. Is that right, Steve? Fucking good for you, Stevie. But you don't travel that much, do you, Steve? No, you just fucking hang out in Preston and... Oh, can, can, you're gonna get this cock, doctor, huh? Take away his 45,000 pound house. Can't pay, we're gonna take it away. I love it, Steve, I love it. I've seen a lot of places, Steve, I've seen a lot, and, it's, and it's absolutely fabulous to be able to travel and, and come and see. Now, do you know where I'm from? I know you're from Preston. Do you know where I'm from, Steve? Canada, that's right, Steve, you did your homework. Now, have you ever, has anybody been to Canada? By applause, anybody been to Canada? Seven fucking people, Steve. And I don't, I'm, and that's okay with me. That's okay, because I know, I know it's expensive to get to Canada. I went back this year to Vancouver, and it cost me 3,500 pounds to go to fucking Canada. Okay, and, and that's why I know, and if I know my English people right, which I think I do, Steve, <laughs> is English people will not leave this fucking island unless it's 29.95. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking max. Twenty nine ninety five, and we're fucking out of here. Twenty nine ninety five, and then fucking to a place you've never even fucking heard of. You'll be like twenty nine ninety five to Alicante. 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 They'll be like, and they'll be like, well, where the fuck's Alicante? Who gives a fuck? It's $29.95. Fucking grab your flip flops and get on, the, get on the plane with the rest of the fucking poor people. Is there a first class on this flight? There's no class on this flight, motherfucker. Gonna fucking you put your oversized bag up there and you just pray for fucking sunshine. <laughs> 
I'm like, God dang, man. Uh, that's what it is. I'm from Canada. But how great is that, right? How great is that? I get to travel, come and see you people. Because you, one person, the rest of you is like, a 20 year old friend over here. And, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people, the funny part is, funny part is, is that uh, everybody assumes that I'm from. I'm from like big town Canada, right? I'm from maybe Toronto or fuck it, or Winnipeg. <laughs> you know, Winnipeg, where the fuck is that? <laughs> big town is Saskatoon. <laughs> Vancouver. But I'm not. I'm actually, Stevie, you're gonna appreciate this. I'm actually. From a, from a tiny little mountain town, little mountain community, okay? Now, if you know where Vancouver is, I'm pretty sure you might have heard of that place. It's about nine hours north. Nine fucking hours. That's longer than this fucking island. You could put this island in between Vancouver and where I'm from, and you'd end up in the water. Tiny little town, nine hours north, Named Quinell British Columbia, Steve. Quinell British Columbia. And I want you to remember that. And we were fucking hillbillies. <laughs> we were hillbillies because our town, get this, the population of our town, Steve, 7,000 people. And I want you to fucking remember that, Steve. <laughs> fucking 7,000 people. From a little town called Quinell British Columbia, where there were 7,000 people, where I am revered as a god. <laughs> because I left. <laughs> I fucking made it past the wolf circle. <laughs> Wolves would fucking surround our town, waiting for us to try and leave. And then eat us for food, Steve. And I made it past that. And every year, and every year, I go back for the annual Tom State Parade at the casino. Night. Tom's in town. Let's have a casino night. <laughs> And I go back there, and I'll tell them tales. I'll tell them tales of Salford. <laughs> How they love their barn owls. <laughs> and their poor people have a library with three books. <laughs> and I'll go, what are books, Tom? <laughs> Now, I want you to understand how dumb this town is. I want you to understand how fucking stupid this town is, okay, Stephen? You're gonna appreciate this. Now, every year, our province, our province had math exams for every little town. Every year they had it. And our town consistently finished last. <laughs> every year. The stats came in, Steve. We couldn't even read them. <laughs> We'd have the wolf elders come in and <laughs> come in and try and decipher some of the codes. <laughs> One year they saw a pie chart and it just made them hungry, Steve. Okay. Well, that's the town I'm from. It's the town I'm from. But I live here now. I live here. I live here in the UK. And I ain't fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving this island. I am fucking staying here. Why? Because you people have been good to me. Okay? Shit has happened over here that I know would have never happened back in my shithole country. You people have been great to me, Steve. Fuck it. I got to do shit that I'd never been able to do over in fucking Canada. Okay, this last year, I got to play 
a little festival, believe this shit or not, I got the headline, a festival called Glastonbury. <laughs> That's right. Got to headline a little festival called Glastonbury. And you guys love your festivals here, man. You guys do fest in the summertime. That is your fucking thing. Canada don't do it like that. You guys can. You guys have so many festivals. You know, you got, you got so, you got like Isle of Wight, fucking um, Isle of Man, fucking Leeds, Redden, uh, Wicker Man, Festival, fucking Tea in the Park, fucking Leeds, uh, fucking. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that if you put up a panini stall and, uh, and an indie band in any field in the summertime, <laughs> 50,000 of you are gonna show the fuck up and start doing drugs and fucking the shit out of each other. You'll be like, you'll be like, I can hear some music over here. And then you'll be like, oh my God, it's just a bunch of gypsies. <laughs> you don't have any wristbands. <laughs> Gotta get your wrist back. <laughs> this is how many festivals I've been to. I can't even hold up my arm. <laughs> so, I haven't been off ecstasy. <laughs> I can love it. Love it. It's the most amazing thing, man. Cause uh, get this, okay? Get this, Chris. You'll appreciate this. I was on. Uh, I was on at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on a Sunday, okay? On a fucking Sunday. And, and believe it or not, I was up. I was competing for punters, okay? Against a little band called The Who. Can you believe that shit? Little Tommy State from Quinell, British Columbia <laughs> is competing against the fucking Who, Steve. And believe it or not, not a lot of people know who the Who is. Can you believe that shit, Steve? Yeah, watch this. Hey, Chris, do you know who the Who is? No, you don't. <laughs> How fucked up is that, Steve? Don't even know who the fucking Who is, do you, Chris? Don't even know who's in it, right? Don't even know, I'll tell you who's in it, cause it's a guy named, it's a guy named Roger Daltrey and Pedo Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Old Pedo Pete. <laughs> the Pedo. <laughs> Stevie, do you know, you know who Pedo Pete is, eh? Now, Steve, do you know why he's a pedo, Steve? You must know why, right, Stevie? Yes, why is Pete, why is Pete a pedo, Steve? Because he got caught with child pornography. That's right, Steve. Now, watch this, Steve. If you got caught with child pornography, do you think you'd be here tonight, Steve? <laughs> no, you wouldn't, Steve. Because you don't play guitar very well, Steve. <laughs> Always learning. That's a bad name to have if you're gonna be a pedo, huh, Steve? <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Just sounds too good. <laughs> hey, kids, pedo Pete is here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's going up in his ice cream van. <laughs> love the Pete. Love the Pete. <laughs> Fucking Glastonbury. Now that's just shit that happens in your life, right? Just, oh. 
That is shit that happens. Sometimes you gotta you got appreciate those good moments. You know, 46 years old, man, and I, that's a great call to get. Fucking right? Glastonbury, that is a fucking good call to get. I'm fucking, you betcha, you gotta appreciate that shit. I mean, fucking, you know, like, I mean, I mean, and I, I've been around 46 years, you know, I, I know a good call from a fucking bad call, everybody does. You know, it's like, ring, ring, excuse me, everybody. Fucking phone's ringing. That's how old I am. <laughs> Up from here. <laughs> Just, actually go ring ring. Excuse me, everybody. But I'm old school. I'm old school. Fuck. I'm making this one. Like, there's a there's a fucking hook on my mind. Like, oh, fuck. I can only bring it this far. Like, wow, he's so good at that. Ring 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 ring. Wonder who this could be, Steve. Hey, Tom. It's Glastonbury. You want to have a festival? Fuck yeah, click. It's a good call, right? It's a fucking great fucking call. Fucking ring, 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 ring. Sorry, everybody, fucking, should fucking. Hey, Tom, it's Steve. Fucking, you haven't paid your taxes. <laughs> Tom, this George, George Jetson. That's a bad call, right, Steve? You don't want that fucking call. You don't want that call. You don't want that call. <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Who the fuck could this be? Sure hope it ain't Steve. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom, it's live at the Apollo. Do you want to play it again? <laughs> Fuck yeah, click. Good call. Good call. Ring, ring. Fuck. Oh, God, will this phone ever stop ringing? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Hey, Tom, I'm pregnant. Click. <laughs> Who is that? No one, sweetheart. <laughs> I can't, better not be getting other chicks pregnant, Tom. Women don't like that, right, Steve? <laughs> when you get other women pregnant, they don't want to know about it. <laughs> Bury your head in the sand. <laughs> So I get the call, right? I get the call. I get the call. And uh, fucking, and, and my, my agent, and she's really great. And she is a she, by the way. Fucking, I have a woman agent. I'm fucking women, you don't even realize, women rule my fucking life. <laughs> fucking everything I do, uh, I'm a puppet. <laughs> like serious women, fucking women are always going on to me. Fucking to me, they're always like, hey, we want to be equal. Equal, I'm like, I, I totally agree with equality. I can't wait to be equal one day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you guys are on about. <laughs> fucking, you make all my, I don't even get my money anymore, Steve. <laughs> if you came for my money, I'd pass you on to my wife. <laughs> she has it all. <laughs> Here's an allowance, Tom. <laughs> you get this much. Cause you remember when you fucked it all up. <laughs> oh, that's right, somebody left me in charge. <laughs> I'm an artist, not a numbers man. That's <laughs> cool. You're laughing, Steve. This is good. <laughs> It's a great call to get have, man. That is a great call to have. And so she called me up. She called me up and she said, Tom. She said, Tom, do you want to headline uh, Glastonbury? And I'm like, what the fuck's a Glastonbury? <laughs> and she's like, Tom? Tom if, what the fuck's a Glastonbury? It's only, it's only England's largest Peace and love, freedom, hippie festival, Tom. There's gonna be over 150,000 people there, Tom. And I went, no way. 
that's like three times the size of my town. <laughs> A lot of people in here don't know why everybody else is laughing. <laughs> Remember a little while back, I said I had 7,000 and we were real bad at math? <laughs> pow pow! <laughs> Nobody sees that one coming. A lot of people have been complaining, saying, Tom, fucking, where's all the math jokes? <laughs> Dropped it. <laughs> pow! Pick up that math joke. Kick it over to you. She goes, Tom! She goes, Tom, guess who's going to be there? And I went, who? She goes, good guess. <laughs> I'm like cutting the cheese. Cuts two in a row, one for you, one for you. Will there be any more cheese, Tom? I don't know. I got a big flock of it here, and I haven't dished it all out yet. She goes, Tom, Tom, guess who's gonna be there? She goes, Tom, Kanye West is gonna be there. And I went, whoa, nothing says peace and love like Kanye West. Wow. I mean, every time that angel opens his mouth, Will my bitch let me see other bitches? <laughs> it's one of his lyrics, and every time I hear that, will my bitch let me fuck other bitches? I just, you know, I just, come here, kids. We gotta have a hug. <laughs> just, those lyrics just bring me and my family closer together. <laughs> my bitch let me fuck other bitches. Do unto others as they would do to you. <laughs> Guess who else is gonna be there, Tom? Lionel Richie's gonna be there. And I went, no way. I thought he was dead. I did. <laughs> I totally thought the lead singers of the Commodores was dead. And you don't even know he was the lead singer of the Commodores. I remember, I remember fucking somebody told me, they said, Tom, Lionel's dead. And I came home that day about two years ago. I said, kids, guess what? Lionel died. And uh, it's the saddest day in the state household. And kids just went into their bedroom and started crying and shit. And, my wife was all mad. Why'd you have to tell him I'm that, Tom? And I said, they gotta know the truth. We can't hide, can't hide shit from our children just because it makes them feel uncomfortable, okay? And fucking, so when they told me that Lionel was alive, I said, come on up, kids, guess what? <laughs> Lionel's alive. And, uh, it's, it's the first time I'd seen him smile in two years. <laughs> We just put on some Kanye West. Fuck, <laughs> you know, it was just a great day. It's just one of those great days. We put some meat in the slow cooker and just, you know, just sat around and had a Lionel day. It's kind of like Christmas at our house. It's called, it's called Lionel Day now. <laughs> Said. And he goes, guess who else is gonna be there, Tom? The Dalai Lama's gonna be there. And I go, I don't know any of that guy's tunes. <laughs> it's gotta be like one of those indie bands or something playing, <laughs> playing in a field tent somewhere. I don't know who the fuck the Dalai Lama is. Fuck that guy. <laughs> but here's the problem now. Is I live in the here and now, Steve. I live in the fucking here and now. I've read enough books, I've read enough Eckhart Tolle, Alan Watts, all that fucking bullshit to know that all we have is here and fucking now. There ain't no past, there ain't no fucking future. But you can't name Kanye West, Lionel Richie, and the Dalai Lama. They're gods, I'm a mere mortal. 
Okay? Now, you can't name those three names with my head not going into the future thinking shit might fucking happen. Because in my mind now, there is, a, there is a slim possibility that me, Kanye West, Lionel Richie, and the Dalai Lama just might end up in a hot tub. I can see it. I can see it just... All of us in our speedos, you know, <laughs> fucking playing the toe touching, maybe me and Lionel touching each other's toes and shit. And Lionel starts to smile, and you know, you know how when Lionel smiles, you know, just brightens up the whole hot tub. <laughs> Kanye starts smiling, Dalai Lama, what are we doing? You know, starts, you know, Dalai Lama don't hang out in hot tubs, you'll just see us touching each other, think he could touch anything, probably. And your Dalai Lama starts touching my dick and shit. And I'm like, whoa, Dolly, that's a soft toe. That is a soft, soft toe right here. Okay, that's the rules, Dolly. If your toe touches something soft, it ain't a toe. Okay? I don't know if you can understand English, but what you did there, you just dip toe touch me. That's not on. Not on, am I right, Steve? I'm not on. <laughs> but if anybody's gonna fiddle your dick with their toe, well, you don't want it to be Pedo Pete, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Fucking, but the Dalai Lama, I'll let him touch my, my dick with his toe. I mean, he's the, he's the he's peace and love in, a, in human fucking form. I mean, fucking, if anybody's gonna touch their, touch your dick with their toe, it might as well be the fucking Dalai Lama. I mean, they'd probably bless it or something, you know? They'd probably if you touched your dick with a toe, you'd hear ting. <laughs> just ting, and then all of a sudden, a big fucking golden glow comes out. And the next thing you know, you jerk off once. Gold starts coming out. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm coming gold. And the Dalai Lama would be like, you should give it to the poor, Tom. <laughs> give it to the poor. And I'd be like, all right, and just get all the poor people. All right, poor. Here's some gold for you. Oh, you got a little gold on your chin there. You know? Drop that. Just put that in your pocket. Come gold in your pocket. Come gold, so everybody needs it. Uh, so that was exciting. So we, we, we said, fuck it, let's go. And uh, me and Trudy Jane, me and my little gal, Trudy Jane, we thought, fuck it, let's go and do this. Let's go check out this peace and love fucking hippie festival, freedom. Let's find out what fucking it's all about. And we got in my little Honda 2002 Civic that some cunt fucking knocked the window out of it at the Sulphur Travel Lodge last night. If I catch you, I'm gonna fucking kill you. We got in it, we drove. We drove down to the Glastonbury expecting to see 150 thousand hippies in the field. But did we, when we drove there, did we see 150,000 hippies? Did we? No, we didn't. Why? Because we couldn't see them, Steve. They built a wall around them. They caged the fucking hippies in, Steve. And nothing says peace and love and freedom like a fucking wall. <laughs> Huh? You ask any Palestinian, Steve. <laughs> fuck. Little fucking, you'd betcha, fucking the, every wall, probably a bunch of Palestinians just hanging out behind the wall. Going, fuck, are the Jews having a concert in there or something? <laughs> Go to the Jew concert. <laughs> go to the Jew concert. Go on. And then fucking, then we drove through the wall. We got past Checkpoint Charlie there. 
I passed it. And then what happened, Steve? We got we had to go to security. Had to go through security. Fucking nothing says peace and love and freedom <laughs> like security. <laughs> Fucking nothing, nothing says trust like security. And what do you think they were looking for? What do you think they were looking for, Stevie? Drugs, that's right, Steve. Because I didn't think you answered that fast enough. <laughs> we're looking for drugs, but they weren't gonna find them, Steve. Why? Because I put them in my wife's pussy, Steve. <laughs> in her pussy, Steve. That's the kind of relationship we have, Steve. And that is a 40-year-old pussy, Steve. You're not gonna find anything in there anymore. Uh, and that is a 40-year-old pussy. I've been in there a few times myself. And I haven't known my way around. And I got lost a couple times. She's so like, Tom, say something and I'll guide you out. I love it, it's warm, but I'm lost. <laughs> Everyone's going, he did not. <laughs> did not, of course, I didn't put him in my wife's pussy. <laughs> not when I got a perfectly good asshole, Steve. <laughs> I'm all for mule and drugs into a concert. <laughs> Shove a bunch of cocaine up my ass and let me get it through. And I hope one of those bags breaks before I get in. That's a good story to tell. Fucking, yeah, fucking big bag of coke just blew up in my ass. And I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> but I had to. It's fucked up too, man, because it's fucking. They don't treat you the same way as they treat Lionel Richie and all that. <laughs> if you're a comedian, you're in the comedy tent. They're on the pyramid stage. You're in a fucking tent. I had to buy a tent. Can you believe that shit, Chris? I had to buy a fucking tent. You ever bought a tent? You've been to concerts, right? You've been to festivals? Yeah, yeah. You probably know what kind of a tent's out there, right? I had to get a little festival tent. They know about festival tents. You know about festival tents, right? A little tiny tent, put it in your pocket, right? With your fucking weed and shit. And then you get to the festival, you just chuck it in the air and it lands and it's all done and you're off doing your MDMA. Am I right there, Chris? Exactly. Yeah, I MDMA for the first time. I'm gonna go see the who, wherever them cunts are. Fucked up, man. It's fucked up. Festivals are fucked up for you guys. You, you, women, you've been to festivals? You've been to some festivals? You've been to a few? Yeah, fucking tough, right? It's hard for women, right? Because we do live in a society where women are taking over. Is that right? You got control of your pussy now. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Jill, right on. You're, you're pretty much in control of that pussy, yeah, Jill? Right? Back in the 70s, you had no control over it. Men, apparently, I don't know. That's just what I'm hearing. <laughs> Apparently back in the 70s, we weren't fucking just bossing your pussy around. But now you take control of it, right, Jill? Uh, exactly, man. If you go to a festival, right, and you want that little pussy to be filled, you can do that now, right, without feeling bad about it, yeah? Right, you go to the festival, say you want to look for a little dirty dick, right? <laughs> little fucking Jill wants some dirty dick. Jill, get some dirty dick. Jill ain't gonna feel bad about getting dirty dick. That pussy is yours. You put whatever you want in there. Don't listen to these fucking people shame that little pussy of yours, right? And this is your man right here, yeah? What's his name? Peter, right on. So Peter's there, he's got his dick dirty. And you say, Pete, get your dirty dick over here. Right? So you're in there fucking, you, can, you take him back to the tent. This is real important to me, because I got a 15-year-old daughter that goes to a lot of these things now, on her own and shit, right? So you can bring fucking Pete back and you on his dirty little dick, right? You're ripped on MDMA, you don't give a fuck. <laughs> but something happens, Jill, you decide to change your mind, and this is important, man. This is important, this is for everybody that's ever gonna watch this video. I want you to know that. You change your mind, Jill. You change your mind, you do not want that dirty dick, okay? And when a woman says no, Jill, when a woman says fucking no, it means what, Jill? 
<laughs> what does it mean, Jill? No means no. Yes, that's right, Jill. Fucking <laughs> Jill. You may have just put women back about 800 years. I was not expecting that. Beautiful women. What the fuck happened to these two? <laughs> a woman says no, it means no. That's what it means, because women are hardcore on that. That is a big deal. And I, and I respect that, right, Pete? I, I've never, I don't want anybody, if, you, if any woman says no, but I want every woman in here to know this. And I think Pete, me, Steve, and Chris can account for this. <laughs> if a man says no, what does it mean? Yes. <laughs> yes or maybe at very least. <laughs> huh? Men aren't so hardcore on their nose. <laughs> Fuck it, because we still like to play hard to get. We're fine with it. And my, my thing is too, is it, you know, it's pointless anyways, because women don't respect men's nose. You just don't. How long you been with this young lady for, Stevie? <laughs> You're a fucking accountant. <laughs> okay, 14 years. Now, Stevie, come on, 14 years? Fucking, you come home after fucking doing your accountant shit, and, and this lovely lady wants to fuck the shit out of you, but you're a little tired and you say no. Did she fucking stop? No, she didn't. She fucking rode you fucking hard. You were raped that day, Steve. <laughs> We fucking raped that day. <laughs> Women have raped men for as long as I can remember. Not one man in here hasn't been raped. But you see, we go around and cry about it, Steve. <laughs> no, we don't. We fucking brag about that shit. <laughs> I guess he got raped today. Can you believe it by a loved one? <laughs> Sometimes our no does mean no, right, Steve? If I'm being gangbanged by six bikers in a basement, <laughs> that is a hard no we're dealing with. I'm pretty sure that's straight across the board. I know I'm gonna get a lot of complaints for that joke. But, you know, I have the right to offend. <laughs> Welcome to comedy. <laughs> oh, I had to buy a tent anyways. Fucking before we got on to no means no. I had to buy a tent. Now, I've never bought a tent before. Never bought a fucking tent. Uh, went to the only place that I know I could get a tent. Steve, we're in trespass. I went in there, said, hey, hey, I'm going to Glastonbury and I need a seven bedroom tent. <laughs> Just in case Lionel shows up. <laughs> we party all night long. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, oh, fucking yeah, just sit the fuck down. <laughs> but she fucking came the wrong way. What did I say about drunk chicks in the front row? <laughs> So he goes, I got a big tent. I got a big ass fucking tent. And he shows me this big ass tent. And uh, I said, he said, Thomas tent, it can be put up in 15 minutes. And I said, that's the fucking tent for me. I didn't ask him how to put it up. <laughs> Just said, that's a tent for me. That's a danger, right, Steve? Fucking, we're men, fucking 15 minutes, easy. That's what we, we skip all that part, we just see easy. So I go through the lineup, I get some reinforced spikes, I find a mallet that's only two pounds. I'm like, fuck, I'm getting a two pound mallet. <laughs> fucking mallet. A lot of people call it a hammer, but it's a mallet. Or as the French call it, mallet. <laughs> it's just sounds gay. <laughs> hey, where's my mallet? So I get it, we get there, man. Now we got there, we got there, uh, we got there on the Saturday, okay, when it was raining. Started fucking raining. 
Now that tent may have been able to be put up in 15 minutes had it not been raining. <laughs> had I not been knowing not what I was, how the fuck, I didn't know how to put it up. That was number two. Or by uh, having a loved one uh, fucking putting pressure on you. Okay, calling you a fucking retard. <laughs> Yep, we use that word in the state household. <laughs> you ever try to do something when somebody's calling you retard perfect, and then just laughing at you? You lose concentration. <laughs> now I don't know how the, I don't know what the steps were to actually put the tent up, but I'll tell you what they were that day. Okay. Okay. For me, step one: lay your ground sheet. Everybody knows that. Fucking ground sheet. Don't want to get it wet. Uh, step two: put all the poles in the wrong slots. <laughs> That's blue, Tom. That's that orange. Step three: have a cigarette and calm the fuck down. <laughs> and try not to smash your loved one in the face with a two-pound mallet. That's <laughs> shit. That's good shit though, right, Steve? That's good fucking shit. That's good shit that happened to me. Oh. Uh, lots of shit happens in this lifetime though, Steve. Lots of shit happens. Good shit happens and bad shit happens. And you gotta appreciate both of them. Uh, fucking bad shit's happened to me this year, too. Bad shit's happened to me. Yeah, you guys had a little fucking vote this year. <laughs> Wanna kick me the fuck out? <laughs> <laughs> fucking apparently you don't want me here, Steve. <laughs> yep. <laughs> guys had a little vote. Wanna... Fucking England wants to know who the fuck's coming into this fucking country. You don't like immigrants. You wanna know who the fuck, which is really weird, coming from fucking English people. You don't like immigrants yet. Yeah, you fucking populated the whole fucking world. Ain't a place I can't go where there ain't an English person. Fuck, I could be on the uh, fucking island in the middle of the Pacific. 80 fucking new one English. Hello. <laughs> Yes, I came here in the 1800s. <laughs> they showed me to eat this tree bark that makes me live forever. <laughs> I'm an expat. <laughs> now you can get worried. Too many of these guys, you don't know who's showing up to this house party. It's like a big Facebook fucking party. Just letting everybody in, right? Steve, now you want to know who the fuck is coming in here. Well, give them. Check them out, but I'm gonna tell you something, Steve. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm the right kind of immigrant. I am the immigrant you want in this country. And not for the reasons you think, you racist bunch of cunts. Mm -mm. Don't you get on. Not for the reasons that you fucking think. Because I got here on the point system, Steve. I got here, I've, and I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I scored high on the point system. Yeah. And I got most of my points from knocking up one of your women folk. <laughs> and that's the kind of skilled labor you need in this country. <laughs> Fuck the doctor that can't speak English and save your life. <laughs> Fucking get your dick in here, Tom. <laughs> we need your fucking dick in here. You fucking just fuck that intelligent dude. We need your uneducated hillbilly ass in here. <laughs> yeah, man. But it's so funny, man. This is like, uh, this is the, this is the first year I'd ever been called an immigrant. You know that? First year I've ever been called an immigrant. Been living, walking amongst you people. Walking amongst you people. Well, for a long time, just feeling all, all non-immigranty. <laughs> this year was the first year he called me an immigrant. And I remember when it happened. I remember what, when it fucking happened. Now, Steve, you married 14 years, right? 21 fucking years. I married 21 years. Now, Steve, got one question for you. Try and answer this one a little faster. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
So let's get that brain revved up. I'm gonna give you a red, yellow, and then go, okay? 14 years, Steve. 14 years. Do you still buy your own clothes, Steve? Yeah, fucking, uh aha. -huh. See, I don't buy my own clothes anymore, Steve. I do not buy my own clothes. 21 years now, clothes just show up at my house. She goes shopping, she finds shit for me to wear and brings it the fuck home. She'll go, I saw this good fucked up green shirt and I thought I'd get you to wear it, Tom. <laughs> Well, I don't have anything else, so I guess I am. Yes, I know you do. Just give me two seconds. So, th so what I decided to do was I decided I was gonna go get my shopping skills back. Okay, I was gonna go get my shopping skills back. And I, I went out shopping, man. I went to all the fucking places. Now, you said you go shopping, right? That's what you said. You said, I go shop. Where, did you, where do you go to buy your own clothes there, Steve? Where do you go and buy? On online. <laughs> I can get a bit of an asshole, Steve. Online. Online, Tom. I too do not leave my house, but I still have choice, Tom. I gotta try shit on, man. That's why I can't be online shopping. I'm pretty sure you bought a lot of shit and went, fuck me. I really thought I was a medium. I really think it did. Now, Stevie, fucking, I went to all the places, man. I, I went to, I went to H and M. I went to Burton's. You ever been to Burton's? Forty-year-old man love Burton's. I saw three V-neck T-shirts for ten pounds. I thought, fuck it, I got thirty pounds. Give me six of them. <laughs> I'm running out of cheese. <laughs> So, so I went there and then I went to the Gap. And that's when it fucking happened, okay? And 40-year-old uh, men shouldn't be at the fucking Gap. Okay, it's not a place for us, right? So I walked into the Gap and I'm looking for trousers, right? And I call them trousers now. I used to call them pants. And when I asked, the first time I asked for somebody for pants, I went, what are you fucking retarded? <laughs> That's what do we call them here, Tom? Pants. <laughs> and I say trousers. So I walked in there, and this 20-year-old, like, I walked in, and it got a tap on my shoulder, and all I heard was this. All I heard was, hi. Hi. <laughs> Can I help you? And I turned around to see what only I could describe as a man-woman. <laughs> It was, a, it was about Chris's age. He was 20 years old, and it was a man woman. And I'm, I'm not even talking surgical. I wasn't saying that, that this guy was a man and he was working on being a woman, or he was a woman trying to work on being a man. This was natural. Okay? God created this thing. This, this was like one. It was the most beautiful thing. I'd ever seen. It was evolution, man. It was like, I was like, I was looking at the yin and the yang. Uh, it was right in front of me, and this guy was the line in the middle. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. If she had a dick, I would have sucked it. <laughs> yeah, right? It was so beautiful, man. And, uh, and, and she goes, what are you looking for? And I go, hey man, good. I'm looking for trousers. I'm looking for trousers. And he goes, well, well what size are you, Tom? Well, I didn't know my name. <laughs> Maybe we did, who knows? Uh, what's the time? And I go, I'm a 33, 32. Pretty good, huh? 33, 32. And he took me around and he showed me all kinds of sizes. I, I saw a shitload of sizes. I saw 45, 28. Okay. I want you to hear that again. A 45, 
door. Who the fuck? Who the fuck? Well, hey man, you got any 45, 28? No, Humpty, we're all out. Tweedledee came out in here last week. It was his brother's birthday, about the last three. About the last three, 48. 45, 28. Like <laughs> a jogging pant. <laughs> Have you seen jogging pants, Steve? They're, they're awesome. <laughs> they're like pants, but they're like fucking track. They're made out of track pants shit, but they're like, they look like jeans, but they're like, so you can like run in them. So it looks like you're going to work, but you're actually working out. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Stade. Welcome to Useless Information. <laughs> Got a whole series. <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> there's the snort we're looking for. <laughs> So, and then he goes, 20 minutes into it, he said, hey, Tom, listen, um, listen, that accent is super driving me crazy. Where are you from? And I went, oh my God, he's talking to me. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm from a little place called Canada. And he goes, oh, you're one of those fucking immigrants. <laughs> And I said, what the fuck did you just say to me, bad one? <laughs> because you hurt me, you filthy fucking foreigner. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's it. Man, I'm gonna go get your manager. Because you get whoever you want if they can even understand you, foreigner. <laughs> and I went and got his manager. And I went, look. I want to give. I want to lay a complaint against this fucking thing. <laughs> and he goes, "That's fine, but it doesn't even work here." <laughs> I got played at the Gap, Steve. <laughs> Some 20-year-old dude saw a 40-year-old man walk into the fucking gap and said, watch this. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with this old cunt. <laughs> Couldn't stop laughing, man. I fell in love with man, woman all over again. <laughs> I it was too beautiful. It was too fucking beautiful. But he called me an immigrant, man. He called me an immigrant, and that's the... And that fucking bugged me, you know, that, that really fucking bugged me, right? You know, so I, I, I started, I, 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 came, I came out and I started thinking to myself, you know, why don't, why? Why don't I feel like an immigrant? Never felt like an immigrant in my life. It's here, Stevie, never felt like an immigrant in my life in England. And I'm thinking, why don't, why don't I feel like an immigrant here? And I started looking at all the beautiful people on this island. I started looking at everybody walking down the streets and shit. And it finally hit me. The reason I don't feel like an immigrant in England is because England is a land of fucking immigrants. That's right. Yeah, people have been coming over here for 5,000 years to shove their dicks inside you. That's how long, that's how many people have shown up on this fucking island. This is immigrant fucking island. You wouldn't even know what a real English person looks like. That's how many dicks have been inside you. Cause you don't have pictures of you guys 5,000 fucking years ago. There's no pictures of you. You guys probably started out as little Eskimos. Little English Eskimos running around looking for fish and chips. <laughs> Oh, I might get some fish and chips. Get, get some chips. There's some tree chips. Ooh, I love chips. And then, then the fucking first immigrants showed up. The fucking Romans showed up. 
without a fucking and started fucking the shit out of that little Eskimo. Just fucked his little ass. Fuck that little English Eskimo's ass. And all of a sudden he wasn't so fucking Eskimo anymore, was he? He was a little Roman Eskimo now. Running around looking for fish and chips with a little metal helmet on. Boy, get some chips and if something falls on my head, I won't die. Right? And then the Vikings showed up and pounded that little helmet wearing Eskimo. And gave him the gift of red hair and fucking awesome muscles. Fucking ripped fucking little Eskimo with a helmet on looking for fish and chips. And then the French showed up in their faggy little boats. <laughs> Just started chucking jizz around. Put it in your stairs. Let me watch you. Let me watch you put it in your theft. <laughs> Look at the Eskimo putting my chest in. <laughs> We've changed. That's all I'm saying. It's a fucking changed. Oh. And, and you know, you know. So I started thinking. I started thinking. You, know, where the fuck would I feel like an immigrant? You know, there's places I feel like an immigrant. You want to know where I feel like an immigrant, Steve? China. <laughs> I totally feel like an immigrant in China. And I'll tell you why. Cause they've always been there. They've always been there. Look, if you look at a picture of a Chinese guy five thousand years ago. And they are out there. There are pictures of the Chinese guys 5,000 years ago. And you look at a picture of a Chinese guy now, not much has changed. Okay? DNA's pretty much stayed intact. Okay? Vikings never showed up on the Chinese shore. Huh? How many, how many leaf lings do you see walking around? Right? Huh? Hey, Olaf Chin, what the fuck's happening? Just seven foot tall, red headed Chinese guy, that's what the fuck's happening. Okay? This ain't anything wrong. Just some countries are more diversified, and this is, this is something you gotta take care of, Steve. And I'll show you how diversified this country is. Watch this, Steve. Look, if you took seven of, seven other your countrymen, okay? I don't care if they're Chinese, Indian, Caribbean, what the fuck, it could be from Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland here, it doesn't fucking matter. Any seven, okay, Steve? And you put me and those other seven in a lineup, and we did not speak, you wouldn't know I wasn't from around here, would you, Steve? No, you wouldn't. But I will guarantee you this right now. If you put me in a lineup in China, yeah, you're gonna get it right on the first try. Yeah? Uh, number four, can you please step forward, please? Fucking born here! <laughs> Racist Chinese cut. <laughs> Say, just because I'm white, I can't be Chinese. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Sit there, you know, people are so precious about their fucking countries and shit, right? So I, I'm Canadian, right? You think I'm Canadian? I'm not Canadian anymore. I've been living over here for too fucking long. You guys have stripped Canadian out of me. That's what the English do. You fucking, you strip, like, fuck it, that's, you're like the Borg. <laughs> the only thing Canadian left in me is this accent. That is it. 
Okay, you still, you look, they're the fucking board. Fuck it, bring all the Syrian fucking refugees in. Bring them all over here. You think they're gonna be Syrian for very fucking long? <laughs> you English people will strip everything good about these Syrian people. <laughs> and in one generation, they'll be in a Weatherspoons complaining about two for one fucking chili. <laughs> one generation. That's how good you guys are now. Like, hey, mate, you're not gonna need your culture anymore. You're English now. <laughs> Get the fuck in the weather spoons and start complaining about shit. That's what we do here. And you don't have to speak the language, just start complaining about it. You can complain about it in whatever language you want, just complain about it. That's what makes the thing <laughs> like What we say, it's how we say it, and we say it angry. <laughs> right? And, uh... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize how how English I've become too. You know, I, I, do you want to know when I realized how English I've become? When I went back to my ex fucking country of Canada, and uh, I went back there this year, and I got a fine for something that I forgot was illegal over there because I've been living over here for too fucking long. I got an eighty dollar fine for something they called jaywalking, and that is a real thing. <laughs> Do you know what jaywalking is, Steve? What is jaywalking, Steve? Walking across the fucking road. That's why I left. These fucking Nazi Canadians won't even let you cross the fucking road anymore. That's right. If you don't know what jaywalking is, in my ex-country, it is illegal to cross the road wherever the fuck you feel like it. And I don't even know when the law came in. I don't know when this Nazi fucking government went. These Canadians... They're too fucking stupid to get across the road. <laughs> if any of them try it, <laughs> arrest them. <laughs> right? Because right? you guys don't have a term for jaywalking over here. The term for jaywalking over here is what? Crossing the road. <laughs> and because I've been living over here for too fucking long, if I see a top shop I need to get to, <laughs> And it is right over there. I'm not going the long way around. English people don't go the long way around. I'm gonna fucking go for it. Yeah. Why? Because you good English people taught me the gift of looking both ways. Seriously, before I used to dart into traffic like a fucking chicken. And then you went, boy, mate, you gotta kill yourself. <laughs> you gotta look that way, look that way, and then you fucking head it up. <laughs> and English people don't give a fuck where you cross. You do not give a fuck. Cars could be flying at you at 80 miles an hour. Traffic lights just turn green. They're 20 minutes or 20 seconds of moon. And you'd be like, it'll stop when it sees the kids. Come on. Kids here. Gotta cross the fucking road, fun roadside. Fuck you. Here's your stop sign right fucking here. It's called a seven year old. Fucking <laughs> seven year old. So I came back. Came back, Steve. Checked out fucking, because once you see how English you become, you see it in everything. You see it in everything, okay? Like even the tele programs I watch, even the fucking tele programs I watch. Uh, they, they ain't Canadian. And I used the word telly, thief. That's even funny. Uh, before, I, I, I used to use the word TV. That's what we used to say. We, back in the home country, we took the first letter, the first word, first letter, the last word, smashed those two together, <laughs> and call it TV. You guys said, fuck the words, we're calling it a telly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funner to say. I just fucking love it. It's like trying to get a slow child to say television. <laughs> Television, telly. <laughs> telly. 
a little slow, tell me. I'm gonna go with that. Oh, there's another letter coming my way. <laughs> my child's slow, and I didn't appreciate that. He says tell you all the time, and we can't smile when he says it. It's gonna hurt his feelings. <sighs> so I came back, man. Now, now, before I used to watch, I might have watched something Canadian, you know? When I first came over here, I might have watched something Canadian. Fucking, huh, Pete? What do you think a Canadian might watch? Do you know anything about Canada? What do you think a Canadian might watch? What do you think? Maybe fucking take a guess. Just anything. Fucking speed the show. Up. <laughs> what, what do you know about Canada? Shite. Okay. Fucking <laughs> 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 make it right out. What about you? What are, ice hockey? Anybody? Montreal, right. come with the golf. What? Ni Niagara Falls? <laughs> That's not a telly program. Fucking Niagara Falls. Fucking, yeah, we fucking, we'll go with Niagara Falls. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey kids, Niagara Falls on. <laughs> See the 13th season. <laughs> Is this the one where the water falls over the <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> okay, well maybe uh, a long time ago I'd want to watch Niagara Falls. But since I've been here, I don't want to watch Niagara Falls anymore. Since I've been here, I want to know if there's any cash in the attic. <laughs> I want to know if there's any attic cash. That's how fucking English I've become. And you guys, you know what the funny part is? Is you guys don't even know how English that show is. And, and there's probably some people in here that don't even know what the fuck cash in the attic is. Because you got something called a job. <laughs> and I'm really sorry to hear that. <laughs> Some of us are lucky, some of us gotta work. Man, and you don't even realize how fucking English that show is, man. I try to tell people what that show, where the fuck are you going today? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hold your hand, okay? Everybody on the DVD, Steve has tried, he's 51, he's got a big prostate and he needs to unload that shit. <laughs> and I, Steve's been too fun tonight, too fun tonight. Too fun tonight to fucking not let him come back and hear that joke, huh? <laughs> uh, I try to I try to tell people about cash in the attic. They go, Tom, what the fuck's cash in the attic? And I'm like, well, if you didn't, if you know your English people, man, what English people like to do is uh, if they got if they got buy something but they don't have enough money to do it, um, they they bring an expert in. <laughs> And they go up to their attic. <laughs> and they see if they got shit to sell. So they could buy more shit. <laughs> so they could put it back up in the attic. That's what they do. It's a circle for them. They just gotta feel like they're still buying shit, but they're not buying, they're not losing shit. It's like, it's like this, this fucking ring. And uh and the first time I saw it, I was hooked. I was hooked. Pete, you might have got, you're my go-to guy now, Pete. <laughs> Fuck, Steve's gone. Guess who's taking the heat? <laughs> you are, Pete. <laughs> now, come on, Pete. People are fucking, come on, Pete, you can do it. <laughs> now, now, Pete, first time I saw it. Now, how old are you, Pete? 45. Okay, first time I saw it, I got hooked. And I'll tell you why I love Cash in the Attic. And every, every old person watches that shit. You watch it, I know you fucking watch it. And wh why? And I'll show you why. Now, Pete, you back me up on this, okay? When you get older, when you get into your 40s and 50s and shit, you can't concentrate on stuff the same way when you were 19 and 20. Would you say that to be true? It's totally fucking true, okay? Now, watch this. This is why I love Cash in the Attic. How many people in here, by applause, see Game of Thrones? All of them. You haven't seen one of them, have you, Pete? No, you haven't. 
Neither have I, Pete. The reason me and Pete love Cash in the Attic is because we don't have to know what happened on yesterday's episode okay? to know what's going on on any other episode. Well, I could pick it up from 1993 and know exactly what the fuck is going on. Nobody's ever come up to me and Pete and went, holy fuck, Pete. <laughs> Did you see the season finale of Cash in the Attic? <laughs> it was fucking amazing! <laughs> the expert died! He died in the attic. You missed the good episode. You missed the good one, Steve. But I appreciate you came back right in the middle of that joke. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like on tape. <laughs> Steve's old ass walking through. <laughs> it's like I can smell smelly shit. <laughs> Wipe that a little better. That wasn't enough time to take a good wipe. <laughs> Did a little cash in the attic joke there for you. You would appreciate it, Steve. I'm gonna tell you something. If that show were truly English, it wouldn't be called Cash in the Attic, would it, Pete? No, it'd be called Shit in the Loft. <laughs> Well, you need those. Uh, you need those teleprograms. You need those teleprograms because those are the shows that, uh, that tell you your country's doing good. You know, you need you need cash in the attic, flog it, and, uh, bargain hunt, and all that because it's, it says that your country still has shit to sell. Those shows tell you that your country is doing good, and there's there's certain teleprograms that you watch that you need to have in your country to know that you're country's doing well, okay? Uh, one of the most important shows you should have had over here is a little show called Undercover Boss. It's an important show to have. Now, do you, now if you're too stupid to know what, not know what fucking Undercover Boss is, okay, I'll help you out, pretty easy. Uh, boss does what, Steve? goes undercover, that's right. So if anybody shows up at your work wearing a wig asking you fucked up questions about your family, okay, just tell them somebody died and you're gonna get a car in a wig, okay? That's the rule, that's the rule. But that show's important. That show is important to have in your country, and I'll tell you why. Because you can only show that show in countries that are doing real well, okay? You, you, can, you can only show that show in countries that are doing awesome. You can show that show in America. You can show that show here in England. You can show it in Canada and Australia. But there's places that you're never going to see undercover boss. You're never going to see them in these places. And I would love to see this episode myself. You're never going to see undercover boss Bangladesh. Okay? You're not. You're never going to see a guy going, hi. I'm Nigel. And I'm a 52-year-old executive for Nike. And today, I'm going to dress up like a nine-year-old Bangladeshi girl. <laughs> And we're gonna find out what's taking them shoes so long to make. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Oh, Hachi, we build a net. Make sure you didn't kill yourself. That's how much we carry you. And you see, those shows are important, man. And there's lots of shows like that now. There's lots of shows like that that are important. Another big show is a little show called Storage Wars. Fucking Story Wars! The war! But once again, there's places you're never gonna see Storage Wars. You're never gonna see Storage Wars Columbia. <laughs> Oh, this is the big finale. <laughs> she can't do it, she can't do it. Fuck it. 
Never gonna see Storage Wars fuck. Okay, I'm gonna start it again. <laughs> Never gonna see Storage Wars Columbia. Because <laughs> nobody's stupid enough to open up a fucking storage locker in Columbia <laughs> that they don't fucking own. That'd be a terrifying fucking locker to open up. To see that one. All right, Minnie Ma, let's see what the horrible smell is coming from behind this one. <laughs> All right, you got five minutes. Don't cross the line, no touching. <laughs> okay, there's that dead politician and his family, everybody. <laughs> It's about 30 kilos of cocaine pure. I think we can get rid of that pretty easy. <laughs> well, I think I spotted something in the corner that I, that I hope none of the other bidders spotted. But if you look closely back there, I think that's a scared woman. <laughs> find in a Colombian locker. <laughs> what I love about that show, you wanna know why I like that show the most? Do you really wanna know why I love Storage Wars the most? It's because it shows, it, it's really the defining line that shows how dumb Americans are and how intelligent English people are. That is the dividing line. I realized that watching it one night. And I'll show you why, okay? Number one, only, only Americans could put war after storage. Uh -huh. That's the only way to get them to watch the fucking show. If you call that show what it was, you think Americans would watch it? Hey, man, you want to watch people buying shit out of dark? <laughs> Fuck that, Niagara Falls is on. <laughs> You put war in front of it, perks Americans' ears up. They're like, Star George! Get my flag! Get it out of the storage! Start trying to take away my freedom! Build a wall! Make storage pay for it. <laughs> we'll, we'll build the walls. Make sure no more storage gets in here. We'll make, we'll make storage pay for it. Yeah! <laughs> Americans fucking love it. Right? Now that's now the defining line. Okay, this is why. This is the defining line. Now, so you guys had storage wars over here in England, but you didn't call it Storage Wars. Did anybody know what it was called over here? Storage Hunters, that's right. Get in here, come on. <laughs> come on in, come on in. It's gonna look a little fucking goofy. There's gonna be nobody there, then you're magically gonna appear. <laughs> come on, get in, give her a big round of applause. Okay, now it wasn't called. I'm gonna go back for a second. Let's all pretend like I didn't say something. <laughs> we all know what it is. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, you guys had storage wars over here. Huh? But you didn't call it Storage Wars, did you? Does anybody know what it was called? Over here? Storage Hunters, that's right! Right! You don't like to go to war with your storage. You guys like to track it. Tire it out. 
chill it at the end. It's the English way. Wear it down and then fucking kill it. It's not the English do shit. Okay. Uh, in, in Northern Ireland, it's called the storage troubles. <laughs> fucking, fucking Protestant storage in the Catholic locker. <laughs> Protestant fucking storage shit. How dare it come here? We you know we're a Catholic locker. I think I don't know. I don't know much about it. Okay, but that's the dividing line. Okay, now, because whatever you want to call it, okay, whatever you want to call it, storage wars or storage hunters, doesn't matter, okay? But in the, what, in America, it was awesome, Steve, Pete, Jill, it was fucking awesome. It was fucking, in America, couldn't take my eyes off it. Fucking every locker was fucking excited. Every locker, you're like, I wonder what's in this one. Holy fuck! Couldn't get enough of it. But over here, it sucked. It fucking blew. And I'll tell you why it sucked. And you English people should be proud it fucking sucked. Because English people are not stupid enough to leave 30 grand worth of shit. You're not that dumb in a storage locker in fucking Stockport. Okay? Okay? That shit belongs in the attic. <laughs> Thank you.